Thanks for joining me again, Dr. Locke. Uh, only three new cases in the last week, and one was at a long-term care home in Ingersoll, is that right? That's right, yeah, we're, uh, we're investigating that carefully. It uh, was in a staff person who had a bit of a scratchy throat, so she did go and get tested right away. And uh, so far, uh, we've been testing uh, other staff members and other residents and seeing if there's any more cases there. I understand. And the Ministry of Health has just updated its guidelines on testing. What has changed there? The uh, biggest change and the one that we're very happy about is that uh, as we have now more lab capacity and more availability of swabs, we are extending the testing to anybody with symptoms. So before, if you had mild symptoms, we just asked you to assume you had COVID-19 and go home and take care of yourself and stay away from people. Now, if you have mild symptoms, then uh, you can still get you know, tested through the assessment centers. However, you do need to go by uh, the COVID-19 checkup um, .ca uh, web app or you need to go through your primary care provider or public health because we do need to book the appointments at the assessment centers. Oh, okay. And now we're just coming out of a long weekend and I'm sure a lot of people ventured out to see loved ones. What should we be doing to protect each other in these social gatherings of five people or less? Well, there's two things to think about. One is if it's your own family and you know where everybody's been and who they've been in contact with, you can just spend time with them. They're your little huddle. They're your little cluster. And they're, you're probably safe there. But if you're venturing out to visit other family members who live in other towns or other cities or you're visiting people that you're not regularly in touch with, they could have COVID and you might not know it. So in those kind of situations, do really concentrate on keeping your six feet apart and even consider wearing a mask, a cloth mask, both to protect them from you and you from them. And why is it important to keep kids away from group settings? Well, kids, um, we're still trying to learn more about COVID in kids. So we do know that kids, when they get COVID, tend to get the infection more in their nose than in their lungs. And so if it's in their nose, they can shed it more easily and spread it around more easily through their drippy noses. Um, so at the moment, because of that, um, we are, I think we need to be a little bit more careful with putting a bunch of kids together. So that's why we've been holding off with opening daycares everywhere, or at least thinking twice about before we do it. And the other thing is that children can have really mild symptoms and, and hardly show that they have the sickness at all. And so that means they could be spreading it around to other children who then take it home to their families and then spread it in that, that new family as well. So. Uh, we still, at this point, uh, have to be a bit extra cautious when we take children somewhere. Gotcha. And do you have any expectations for the second wave of the virus? Yeah, yeah, we're uh, sitting tight about that. Um, I, we usually do see respiratory viruses uh, become more common every fall. Now that's usually associated with children going back to school, and, and as we just talked about, children spread germs easily. So. Um, we'll have to see what happens with school opening in the fall and also what happens is as the temperatures get colder we spend more time indoors and we're just closer together. So yeah, well, hopefully I think we're just going to have a hopefully not too bad of a summer. We'll see what happens with all the reopening up of businesses and other things and then uh, we'll have to be extra careful in the fall to see if we get a second wave or not. And with the things opening up in the community slowly. Are you in touch with local businesses to give out safe practices? Yeah, we've got good working relationships uh, with our local businesses. Uh, we've been um, sending them out uh, lots of information and guidelines over the last little bit uh, to uh, give them some um, advice on how to open their businesses safely. Um, and this has been hand in hand with the uh, uh, government ministries, such as the Ministry of Labor, the Ministry of Health, who've also been working together and, and uh, providing a large number of guidance documents for our businesses. Uh, so yes, I think that they should uh, have some wisdom or insight on how to run business just a little bit differently. And uh, if not, we're always here to answer questions. That's great. Um, 
Do, you, do hospitals have any guidelines for expectant parents in the lead up to and during birth? Yeah, it is a little bit more of an anxious time for pregnant moms. Uh, I think they're all a little extra worried about what's going to happen. Um, we do know so far, it, it doesn't seem that the virus spreads from the mum to the fetus inside. So far, it seems to be pretty safe. Um, we also know that mums don't seem to be at increased risk of getting COVID relative someone, to someone who's not pregnant. So right now, we say to pregnant mums, just behave like we're asking everybody else to behave. Keep safe, stay apart. Remember to uh, wash your hands. And uh, if you're going to go somewhere, um, you know, try and stay away from everybody, perhaps consider wearing a mask, maybe send someone else to do the groceries just to keep yourself safe from other people. And then, of course, you're also worried about what's going to happen when you have the delivery. So be in touch with your health care provider, your obstetrician, your family doctor, your nurse practitioner, your midwife, and just ask those questions. Well, what about when I'm about to deliver? How will that be different from normal? And uh, that information uh, will help you prepare properly. And what are your thoughts on Health Canada giving the green light for this clinical trial for a potential COVID-19 vaccine? Uh, well, that's good news. Um, there's lots of work going on worldwide for trials. Uh, to get a vaccine, it has to go through uh, several phases. In the early phases, they just try and figure out what is the safest dose um, or what's the best dose to get the best response. And that's the phase that this trial is in. Uh, worldwide, there are a slew of different vaccines in, in various phases of trial. And uh, I, it's great to see that our government is supporting this uh, international work and to try and expedite the uh, formation of a new vaccine because the vaccines have been the best way to fight these nasty viruses for a long time. You know, measles is a virus uh, and uh, we've been able, able to get rid of measles and polio and a whole slew of other viruses. So we certainly hope that this uh, work uh, uh, yields fruit and in a timely fashion. Uh, any final thoughts for the week? Uh, well, it's a, we, it's a time when we're all maybe going to get a little bit complacent. Uh, we, we think that because more businesses are opening up, that things are going back to normal. Uh, unfortunately, until we have a vaccine, uh, we're going to have to get used to the new normal. And the new normal includes physical distancing and washing our hands. Um, so please uh, keep up with these efforts. Um, do consider wearing a cloth mask. Uh, it, it protects you against me and me against you and keeps us all safer together. So if all of us continue on these efforts, hopefully we won't have to deal with a bad second wave. Great. Thanks for your time again, Dr. Luck. You have a great day, Shane.